Rory is the tortoise, and he nope. No. Rory's the hare that went all the way out there. Nope, I'm I'm wrong. I'm just <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Four players in my barstool sports. Second time in the history of this program that we have done this exact move, which is, and Alex Bush is just wrestling around in the back back seat of this minivan right now. Uh, we're in the car. We're doing a podcast in the car. We got GoPro set up. We got Jonesy driving. Trent is shotgun. Myself and Frank here in the captain seat. And Alex Bush, <laughs> this is like a young child packed away into the back seat back there <laughs> with all the mics everywhere. Look, we just landed from Atlanta. We had an incredible Barstool Classic with Sung J M making an appearance. We really had about an hour and a 20 minute drive here. And then we would have to set everything up and go. And we said, we're just not doing that. We're just not doing that. We're going to do it in the car. There's really not enough hours in the day for us when we have these types of Barstool Classics. Plus, we're traveling to stream song. So we had no time to do it. We're not making these guys stay up until three o'clock in the morning editing the podcast. We have an hour and a half drive. Like you said, let's just knock this thing out on the road. I think it sounds pro Does it sound pretty good, Alex? Yeah, it's really I not bet bad. I it sounds great. And yeah. we would have landed. We would have gotten in this car. We'd probably we just talk. We'd talk to Brendan and Alex anyway. Why dude, not just record it? We would have looked at our phones for an hour and a half and been like, we should have been doing the podcast. We're just making things happen. So we are, we just landed in Tampa. And now, yeah, we got an hour and a half car ride. We did this in Las Vegas, I believe. Is that after where it was? After a round of yeah. golf at, I think it was uh, Wolf Creek. That's exactly right. And we sort of forced our pal Jake Bass, who we saw today, in a shocking turn of events. He was at the Atlanta Barstool Classic, one of his buddies, TBC, TBC Sugarloaf, incredible spot. Uh, but we um, we did it in Vegas, and I think it was Lurch driving the car. Possibly, uh, it was, I, I think I do remember that. That was the whole Frankie like didn't want to look like he was. You were bitching at Lurch for looking back. We could go to the dollhouse. What the hell's the dollhouse? I don't know. We just drove by. It sounds like a strip club. Though. I got a decent guess. I got a, yeah. I should have you know. Pink lights. Pink lights. Pink and blue lights. Called the dollhouse. I think it's a strip club. So, uh, anyways, we're en route to stream song. We're gonna talk a lot about that. I imagine on the next show. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about Barstool Classic today, Atlanta. First time we had returned to Atlanta since 2021. Uh, it was cold at first, but it ended up being a decent day, nice day. Uh, and Sung JM was just around. You know, these TBC courses, I guess this Sugarloaf, which was in a part of uh, Atlanta that there are just castles everywhere. I think the CEO yep. of Delta. Um, it, it was kind Should of found his door. Incredible place. Fucking taking a poop on it. But. And we'll get to that part too. But Sung J M is a member there. They said Stuart Sink is as well. And we show up and everybody's gearing up for the classic. We're doing registration. There's a little bit of music playing. And I just see Sung J M getting into a golf cart. He's got his logos all over the place. And I was like, what the hell's going on here? He's a member. He goes up there, practices. And then I saw clips of like Trent was trying to stretch out his back. Sung J's chipping while you guys are screaming into the microphone, doing walk up songs. Yeah. Then we're on the putting green. And we generally, for the put a truly putting contest, shut down the putting green. Because, you know, you, you have members or whoever coming around. It's kind of our event. We've rented out the course. We've got just hoopla going on on the putting green. we got music playing again. We a couple groups or two guys would make it out of four in the group, and we're going nuts. And Sung Jay was just grinding one hole over on the putting green throughout the entire thing. One of the more interesting dichotomies I've ever seen out there. Yeah, we, uh, we were making quite the scene on the first tee. But, yeah. So in, with this new iteration of the Barstool Classic, we have a first tee DJ set in which Trent and I are stationed at the first tee or whoever is going to be at the Barstool Classic when you go. Mm -hmm. We'll be stationed at the first tee and we um, ask that all the people that play in the Barstool Classic submit a song as a walk-up song. And you'd think that we would just like play it for 10 seconds and then bring it down and let you play in silence. No, we blast this thing full volume. We want people to get hyped up. We want you to be able to like take that adrenaline and see how you produce um, yeah, we'll see how you can produce under that type of pressure. So it's a it's a scene. Guys are taking their phones out, they're laughing, they're dancing. And Sun JM is legitimately looks like he's preparing for the Masters, like just to our left, going crazy on the chipping green and just staring at what is happening. Like kept he would chip four or five on, on the short on the short range and look over and just be like, what is happening? Like <laughs> one guy topped one behind his like back, essentially one of the worst swings we've seen in Barcelona classic history. And yeah. it just like skirted right behind Sun JM and he looked up. 
I didn't have my glasses or my contacts. I couldn't see a thing, but I could see from my blindness all the way uh, 100 yards away how rattled Sun J M was that <laughs> something was happening behind him. Um, I just think that he was confused. I, like, what is this like new age type of death metal uh, golf that's happening on the first tee at Sugarloaf? And it's no, you know, I, I don't know what the communication barrier is. I think it's pretty yeah. substantial. I think it's substantial. So even if he knew and could hear everything that was going on, he would be confused. Now imagine for a guy who I don't think speaks much English, for him to just be witnessing all this going on. While he, like you said, he's trying to prepare for the world's most prestigious golf tournament. Uh, it was a very interesting thing going on. But uh, TBC Sugarloaf was awesome. People were raving about the golf course. Uh, it was very difficult. It was beautiful. The greens were flying. Uh, the Atlanta crowd, people are very nice in uh, in Atlanta. Yeah. I feel like in general, they're just super nice. People at the hotel are very nice. Uh, great experience. Good turnout for usual. Me and Frankie uh, requested blankets on the first tee because it was cold and windy. And the woman at the golf course, one of them was nice enough to bring us two blankets. And a lot of Southerners... They seem to be taken aback by that. They were like, "What? Aren't you guys from the Northeast? Aren't oh, you guys I hated that today. from?" The, I know, I can tell. I know you like. Are they like? Aren't you from the Midwest? And my defense of that is, when I go to the South, I think it's going to be warm. I thought for sure it was going to be warm. Didn't even think about packing a quarter zip or a sweatshirt or anything like that. I actually had to buy a TPC Sugarloaf Peter Millar quarter zip. That's actually very nice. But yeah, they seemed confused about why we would have blankets when it was like when I'm in the South. I'm thinking at the lowest, it's going to be like 60 degrees. It was very windy, the spot we were out on the first tee, and we were cold, so we wore, we had blankets. I think that's fine. I get that Northeast elitism, elitist is a thing, so people try and like combat that with their own type of like energy when they see someone from New York or from the Northeast where they're like, you think it's the best? The weather sucks. Come down here. The weather's perfect. And you see a lot of that. Like People know I'm from Long Island. They try and really hammer home. You've gotten a little bit into that with the weather with Arizona, but it's you're able to say it because it's like legitimately nice in arizona like yeah for 365 days of the year except for when it's 140 degrees it's like the devil's asshole out there in the summer but yeah. like it's people fair. love to really really push it in during the winter time when they're like we can go one guy goes we've got 365 days a year baby like and looked at me with like this fucking little smirk on his face i'm like first of all so so we were cold freezing because they had us on top of this hill and we're supposed to be doing this DJ stuff and the wind is whipping. There's not a single thing blocking wind. And it must have been blowing what, Trent? Like 30 miles an hour consistently yeah. all day. Yeah. Right in your face. Like, holy shit. So we said, can we just get like a blanket or something to put over us? We looked like Paul Atreides walking around in Dune. And and this guy comes over. He's like, what? What? Uh, what, are you guys fucking cold? Aren't you from the Northeast? You're used to this shit. And I go, well... It's not like I, I literally said to him, it's not like I just walk around with a t-shirt on when it's like 10 degrees out in New York. I'm like inside or I'm wearing <laughs> yeah. a parka jacket. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, when it's cold out, you're cold. <laughs> like, I'm down here wearing a collared shirt because your assholeness told me it's fucking warm down here. We're in Atlanta, Georgia, and it's 38 degrees and windy. What the fuck happened here? I think so, every time I've been to Atlanta, it's been cold. That pissed me off. But man. we were there for the Super Bowl. It, yeah, it's like, it's cold and it's warm everywhere. You know what I mean? It's just varying degrees. Like, of it, yeah. It's just varying degrees. And it just happened to be cold today. And people just couldn't understand why he had a blanket on. But blanket's a soft move. I'll get ahead of that. Like walking up to two grown men wearing blankets around them <laughs> like they're the Virgin Mother Mary is an absurd look. And it was whipping in the back. It was nuts. But we had to do it. We had to do it. We have the trip of a lifetime coming up. We are here. At, we're on our way to stream song. I was not going to afford any sort of sniffles. I, I was not going to risk any sort of sniffles or any sort of cold. I want to be on top of my game. I want to be feeling healthy. I want to be feeling good. We've got stream song. We got it. We're here until Friday. So if I had to wear a fucking blanket while the wind was whipping, please hold your comments. Did you know that you can get tickets to, and I was just looking at this because of IceCon, you can get tickets to the old Arizona Coyotes game. That is tonight, as this podcast comes out, sixty-seven bucks. Wow, feels like a pretty good deal. Go see a hockey game, the old Melon Arena. It's an go awesome a, go experience. Go see a hockey match. We got the Blue Jackets or Mold Arena, Melon Melon, I think is where the Pittsburgh Penguins play. Mold Arena, Blue Jackets at Coyotes. Uh, it's a tough ticket to get because it's only like five thousand people, but sixty-seven bucks. I'm looking uh, also back there in Arizona. We're not there right now, but 
$33 tickets to the Phoenix Suns game on Wednesday night. Look at all kinds of fun spring training. Spring training is awesome. Diamondbacks, 12 bucks. Cubs spring training. Shout out to Chicago guys, 30 bucks. Point is, we love game time. And, uh, you know, I think the Yankees start on Thursday. You know, wow. it's just MLB season. Let's go. Wow. Yankees Astros, we're just right in the thick of it now. It's baseball season. It's going to be over 162 games plus the playoffs. It's never going to stop. Baseball goes on forever. Hockey, we're not going to talk about, and uh, it is what it is. Like we're just going to keep powering through. I'm on to the next sport, and uh, I'm very excited about it. I think the Blues are bringing it right now against the Vegas Gold. Shout Knights. out to Nick Letty, 1,000 games. One of my one of my good friends in the league. Love that guy. One of the best guys out there. Thousand games, and he's playing for the Blues. The official ticketing partner, who are um, kind of making a little bit of a run, the official ticketing partner of Barstool Sports, that's right, with Game Time. You shouldn't have to worry when you buy tickets to your next big event. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets to all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. Game Time is the best place for last-minute seats with up to 60% off your favorite events. What are you waiting for? Um, we're going to snag some of these amazing ticket deals. I think this weekend uh, I might go to uh, a baseball game. We're going to see. Um, point is, we got options because we're using Game Time, and they're the best option. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code four F O R E for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed, and use that code four. I'm at the bottom of my game. I hurt my back and. I don't know what to do about it. How'd you, how'd you hurt your back? Well, I, it's not even that good of a story. I was just, I, I was packing for this trip. I was putting everything in my golf bag like I regularly do. And then I just went to pick it up to go get into the Uber. And I like slipped a disc in my back or I did something to it. And it hurts really, really bad. And yeah, I just, it's unfortunate. I turned 35 two weeks ago. And I think this is my body being like, you either got to start maybe taking care of yourself or you're just going to be hurt all the time. Um, so I'm trying to recover. I've got one of those like Theragun things that I had at the, they actually had them at the golf course and I was using it all day. And then I bought one from the golf course. That was a was, hell of a move. I mean, I have to, I it's, know. it's actually the only thing that has been making my back feel better. So I've actually got it in my hand right now and I've just been hammering my lower back with this thing. You know, I've been, a lot of people on the internet are telling me what it is, what I need to do. But the, th the, the fact of the matter is, is it just fucking hurts. And I hope that pain's can... interesting. Dude, it hurts. He doesn't know right now if it's like muscular, if it's a tendon, if it's a disc, if it's vertebrae. Like there's so many different things that could go wrong in your back. So if you're hitting it with the Theragun, like it might feel good, but who knows what the actual issue is. I dealt with that with my neck a lot where it's like, oh, I'm trying to stretch it right here. And like the, and, and the chiropractor would be like, well, it's quite literally just like not that at all it's like the your c4 or whatever yeah but how so the hell are you supposed to you're not know? supposed to know you, you yeah. can't and then he's doing stretches and i'm like dude think about like if you if you're if you have a slip disc and you're doing these stretches on the ground you could be doing a work you could be slipping more the you stretches have, made it feel worse some people are saying sciatica do people know what sciatica is i've heard of sciatica that's like down by your asshole right? that's like, i mean it's definitely near it's closer to my ass than my neck where does it feel like it is is that it, where it feels like it is it feels like it's like near my tailbone Oh, yeah, that might be sciatica. Yeah, there are a lot of sciatic stretches that you can do. I don't know what they are, but you can look them up. Um, but it does. It stretches out. Like, Is it like where your hip mat, like meets your spine almost? Yeah. Yeah. That could be it. That could be it, dude. What percentage do you think you're going to be at? Oh, man. I mean, I really thought, because this happened, what, Sunday? And today is Monday Sunday when we were recording morning, this. Man, I thought for sure. I, I, with back over pain. the course of my life, I've gotten back pain. You sleep wrong. You do whatever. Or okay. maybe you even pull something. And then you go to bed, and you're like, all right, maybe I'll feel better in the morning. And you do feel better in the morning. That's how I felt last night, even though I got a bunch of Icy Hot. I got the patches. I got the cream. I was lathering myself. <laughs> in every icy hot product that they had. <laughs> I walked into the airport, uh, the uh, hotel, and Trent was sitting in the lobby and I thought he was just like waiting for something naughty like a, like an ice cream sundae or something. And he's like, <laughs> and he's like, I'm waiting for the Uber Eats guy to bring me icy hot. And I just shook my head and walked to my room. <laughs> well, it's like, oh my God, if, we are if in If we're being one. honest with, in this car podcast, uh -oh. along with the icy hot patches and the cream, <laughs> oh, no. I got a share size bag of peanut butter. And <laughs> so it's like, it wasn't all for my yes, health. Yes, sir. After the icy hot uh, aisle, could you just go down aisle four and just take a look to the right? There's a I big always... yellow bag that I'm going to need also for Orange my recovery. Bag. I've been on a peanut butter. Ooh. I always wonder what, whenever I get like a CVS order like that, 
I always wonder what the driver thinks is happening to this person. I literally got two things of Icy Hot Patches, a thing of Icy Hot Cream, and a big share size of peanut butter M&Ms. <laughs> that guy's like, I don't know what this guy's doing. I, I can't pin this guy down. I've ordered some weird shit on the Uber Eats, like from Rite Aid or whatever. Like I once like, you get like a little ass cream, yeah. you know, like you have like a burning ass and you're just like, I'm going to get some sort of cream, some ointment. Yeah. I don't know. I like think that. you're just sending that guy for fucking a nightmare of a search. I think there's like a, there's, I just wouldn't be able to do that. I feel like I reach a level where I'm like, at this point I need to, only because I wouldn't want that guy to specifically know. That he knows where you live. That. Yeah. Like that's... this, this, this porch I'm mm. dropping this off, this ass cream off. Someone in there <laughs> has right a there. burning <laughs> asshole that I, like, it's so much different than when you just go to a CVS and you see the person's, like, I don't want to have to deal with that stress. And you're going to having, their house there. Yeah. It's like, all right, this, this relationship ends at this counter. Like I get, you're really judging me. Like CVS lady, I see you looking down and looking up, but. You don't know where I live. Like, it's way more personal. <laughs> yeah, that's not good. So, what I... Oh, I was hoping I would wake up today and be like, oh, I feel better. Felt the same, if not worse. So, now I've been jumping into action with this this Theragun thing and just hoping that I'm better. Percentage-wise, be. tomorrow, I, I really don't know. It could be... It could be 85% or it could be 38%. Half of our guys have already been to Streamsong um, today before we got there. I know, Riggs, you may have been here, right? We are once at Lurch years yeah, ago. Yeah, like seven years ago, we came on a whim on the, like a last-minute trip. But I don't remember a ton of the details. But um, from what I'm hearing, I think the amenities, especially from what we've been hooked up with with the nice people at Streamsong for this week ahead, that I think you're going to wake up just feeling good tomorrow, Trent. I really do. I think it's going to be a nice bed with a I nice little so, view, a nice your own room. You're just going to be nice and settled, nice AC cranking, you know, get to bed at a, at a decent hour. I genuinely hope that's true because I want to play. And we're I playing know. golf tomorrow. Like, that's that's it's very exciting. It's going to be like a good way to wake kind up. I like Tiger now, too, though. You got warm weather. You went from cold weather. Yeah. Back was tight. No I thought good. about that today, actually. It's going to be 85 in Florida these next couple of days. You're going to be loosey goosey out there. Will you commit yourself to the six hour pre golf routine that Tiger Woods does? <laughs> I got to get up at 3 a.m. Yeah, and ice you, bath. No, <laughs> I will not. I will wake up and hit myself with a gun a bunch in the back. And that's the only thing I'll commit to. But, you don't uh, mess around with the front at all with those things? No, I think that would. I really think that would like a low push setting. it. Low oh, I think be. it would. I think it would push <laughs> it all the setting. way inside of me. If I, did that. <laughs> I legit think if I tried that, because I've obviously thought about it, yeah, but yeah. like, I think if I did it, I think it would be like it'd be like pressing a button. Yeah, we do have a delightful 3 p.m. tea time tomorrow. Oh, do we really? Yeah, yeah. isn't there oh, wow. something about like the chain? We're doing the chain in the morning at 10 yep. something, which I think is kind of their cradle. It looks like their new par three course which i've never seen that didn't exist when i lived here and then uh we got a 3 p.m for our for our big full first we round, hit the par is... three go and get lunch settle down get ready for our first real real test a little range warm up maybe we've got a lot of great videos lined up we've got trotty trotte mr harry potter himself and then we've got francis ellis who it's his birthday tomorrow as wow. well as well as there's someone else in this car that i think it's his birthday tomorrow really Oh yeah, Mr. Mr. Bitch Boy Alex Bush. Oh wow, wow. I fresh know off of a Miami vacation. Miami, absolutely ripping it and tearing it. The ripping and the tearing in Miami looked like he had the time of his life, and now we have him stuck in the back of a minivan trying to do the podcast. His first day back at work. Yeah, what a uh, you know what a juxtaposition. Well, what a return. day tomorrow is. Um, Alex Bush, are you, are, I'm surprised you're not stuck in that like monsoon in Miami. I heard about. No, it was fine today. It was uh, Friday and Saturday. But during like, the concert, weren't people like falling and sliding around because oh, it was at uh, Ultra, yeah, yeah, they had to like shut it down on Friday, I believe. But the the weather or the there was like flooding on Friday, Saturday. You weren't bad. at that bitch there, at that time. No, I, well, didn't, I didn't go to Ultra. Oh, this is what no. I thought. And then we were near it, man. No, I was, yeah, you were really near it. Closest to the pins gonna be a problem with his steps because I knew he wasn't. I know going. the answer already. I know. I knew he wasn't going, and he went to that freaking gaming world championships. Or whatever. Yeah, but that was no rain in there. That was mostly the weekend. I know. I know. True. Which was afterwards. Your team won? Yes. That's pretty sick. Phase clown? Phase up. Phase phase up. Phase the F up. That's like <laughs> your... <laughs> you're like, this is the team you're a fan of? Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's cool. It is cool. I like that shit. And yeah, where do you like... How does it stack up to your Buffalo Bills fandom? Oh, not. I mean, not even close. Okay. Wouldn't you argue you watch more... The Bills more, won the Super Bowl. Cry. Wouldn't you argue you watch more Phase content than Bills content? Uh, I mean, because there's probably more. There has to be. But, No. But right. it doesn't Still mean now. as much. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, anyways, the Bushman is back. Uh, you got a birthday. How old are you turning? Uh, 31. 
Wow. Very nice. That's right. So happy birthday, Bush, man. Thank you. It's exciting. Uh, all right. Stream song. Yeah, we got the whole week. We got, yeah, Francis Trotty. Great crew. videos. Uh, very excited to get out there. A little Florida golf. Last time we were here, I believe we saw a couple pretty substantial alligators. Yeah. You guys um, did? Wasn't here, yeah, when we were here for the wow. trip. Well, that's just what you get down here, right? Yeah, yeah. Like Central Florida, the whole deal. Brendan, not to put you in a bad spot, but are we at that point for the listeners now where like, so we're filming these videos. Our people can expect these within like the next week or two, right? Oh yeah, dude. It's like we Absolutely. are first we're, one next week. Legit. The first video from Stream Song will air next That's week. Exciting! I didn't That's know exciting. That. Like we're 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 a little bit like low on the fact that we weren't able to like we we ran through all of our videos and now we're hitting it real hard. Brendan, get get that mic on you. So Chase Butler, who's like the head of production at Barstool, was like, "How's everything going?" And I I looked at him. I said, "We caught up for the first time in two and a half years." Two and a half years. <laughs> Dude, we were talking in October. Two and a half years. In October, we remember we did a show where we're like, we have a video, we have two videos every week scheduled until the end of January. And then like a couple more came out. We did the good, good stuff and we ended up doing all that. So like it pushed us even more back and now we're in March and we're here. Like we've made it. We've made it to the other side. Current content will be coming out on the foreplay channel i know that this is something people have been asking for they see us post about it they see us talk about it we're gonna be fucking slamming and shoving stream song down your throat mm. and you're gonna get to see what we're talking about that's exciting you guys are gonna be working around the clock for sure we've got all the editing team here except for kyle but us kyle tims kyle tims is not down here which i know he's probably upset about he was supposed to do a trip recently and then he got uh sick right yes yeah it was uh myrtle Poor bastard. Yeah, we love Kyle Tims. We wish he was here, but it's going to be exciting. You guys are going to be cranking it, and I can't wait to see. I cannot wait to see, so that's exciting shit. PGA Tour is in full swing, so get in on the action with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official betting operator of the PGA Tour. This week, new customers can turn 5 bucks into $150 instantly in bonus bets on any golf bet uh i gotta be honest i had a pretty good weekend uh i bet on the on saturday so i think the day before IceCon, i was able to bet the edmonton oilers over six and a half with elio and the crowd it felt good to be back i actually missed uh one of the other games where he missed uh but point being DraftKings sportsbook it's very fun to do i saw the guys that were up there and then um not the greatest start with golf uh brian Harmon, hmm. i had him top 20 plus money he missed the cut after almost winning the players championship we thought which i thought was shocking and no uh hole in one this no, hold one. no hole in one no hole in one came close feelings. came close on came thursday it was like we're, these guys are just flag hunting but it just didn't happen no. and uh yeah i've un i've somehow just only hopped on the leo losses recently um mm. i've just missed those wins in between those sprinkled in wins the ice man is starting to feel the heat a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, ice con was a setback for sure. <laughs> that was something that I was really excited about at the airport on my way down to Atlanta, and I, you know, I definitely was involved in it. And I was watching that game last night pretty intensely. I cannot believe they pulled the goalie. I'm pretty certain they heard the crowd and pulled the goalie the second time. You know what I mean? Like yep. Ar yep. Arizona had no business pulling that Zero. goalie down too. Zero. They didn't pull the goalie, and then finally the coach just goes, "Get him over here!" <laughs> he goes, All right, we these guys are in my ear. Get him over here, and then that puck went wide by like a foot. Oh, shout out to our guy Deshane. Like you can't just get that thing in there. I know it is what it is, but you know it's been fun. DraftKings, you know the best app. I absolutely love the interface. It's so smooth. It's so easy. Everything about it has been great, and uh, yeah, hashtag DK Partner. I'm excited about it. Yep, I am as well. Um, they've been amazing. They're great to work with. They got the best app. So, um, North Carolina listeners, by the way, uh, do not forget DraftKings Sportsbook now live in your state. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Use the code four. New customers can bet five bucks to get one hundred and fifty dollars instantly in bonus bets only at DraftKings Sportsbook with code four F O R E. The crown is yours. A little PGA Tour action. Uh, shout out to Peter Malnati, who got his uh, first win on tour in nine years. Mm. Had an excellent interview afterwards at the Valspar. 
Um, it delivered uh, about as much as, you know, the Valspar can. It's a tough golf course. Uh, nobody really goes that low there. You can look historically at the scores, not that low. Uh, but out of all the names up there kind of coming down the stretch, he played the best. He's fun to watch. He's very kind of animated out there and and uh, into every shot. He's kind of funny when he plays golf a little bit and, like, his reactions to a lot of the things that happen out there. But gave a crazy emotional interview afterwards just talking about the stresses and how much this means. He was in tears throughout the whole thing. Uh, so I thought it was a very cool victory, a very wholesome moment, and sort of kind of had back-to-back weeks, I feel like, in the PGA Tour. Obviously, it's not on the level of the Players' Championship, but where uh, kind of the victor and the way it went down and a little bit of the drama and the chatter around it was extremely, you know, positive and wholesome, I would say. It was definitely wholesome. It was. It, it, it's just another one of those things. This had a nice story attached to it, so I get it. But it's another one of those situations on the PGA Tour where it's like, no matter who wins, we're always like excited about it. Like you yeah. told me pre-tournament that Peter Malnati was going to win this thing. I've been like, it's not getting your juices. I going. mean, come on, like, what are we talking about? But great story. Love to see the guy succeed. And you know, when you win, you're not gonna call it like a flash in the pan success. But you win, and then you don't you don't get back into the winner's circle for nine years, ten years. His life has changed so much from the time that he first won his PGA Tour event, where he thought. This is going to be it, man. I'm winning on the PGA Tour. I'm a young buck. I'm out here on the tour. I'm winning. Um, and now, 10 years go by, he's got a whole family now. He's got kids. So, like, think about for him, he probably never, he probably thought that was never going to happen again. And now his kids, instead of being able to, you know, you know, you, you don't get to share that with them. Now he has photos holding his kids and a trophy. Like, that's just a huge full circle life moment, which is very cool. Like, you know, I'm not hating on it by what I said about it not being, having the juice, but. It's just, um, yeah, I guess that is why you need these types of tournaments, though, for guys like that to be able to make a name for themselves. Yeah, again. absolutely. Like, you need and, these things. You need these events. And it, I think it was, I think it was a little kind of eye-opening in that all that we've talked about for months and months is the money and the live and three hundred million and what's it going to end up in and ever only the top guys now. And that was a moment where you realize an event like the Valspar that again is not on the level of the top top tier events on the PGA Tour still meant that much to that guy like yeah like that guy's in waterworks because of what's going on and and winning that kind of event and i think that's kind of powerful in the difference that people can still kind of see between maybe uh the live or any other tour and what it means for a guy like that to win on pj tour so i thought it kind of stood out a little bit for that it was a very cute moment is the word i would put it was <laughs> cute um march madness uh, mm-hmm. Colgate, worst team in the worst team in the league. <laughs> it's just never. We're never even in the game. No, nope. we never had a. Ch- there was never a moment where I was like, "All right, now we just got to win the next one." It was just holding on for dear life and just getting the doors blown off of yeah. us. Got out, you know. I sat down, opened up the popcorn, and we were down like nine, <laughs> and then we just never were closer than nine. It felt like so. That was a shame. Uh, yeah, we had funny. an early pick, and that's my that's my bad. Like we had an early pick in the draft, and um, we could have picked so many teams. NC State, like all these guys that were all these teams are around. Who ended up winning? It was it was Gay Pat and Joey. With and what, Joey, with um, what team? NC State, right? Was it NC State? I believe so. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's just a miss by us because I'm pretty sure they picked after us. Um, and, you know, my brother-in-law did give me Colgate, but to his defense, he didn't know that we had so many other teams available. He gave me, like, four or five teams. I don't know that Colgate was the first one. It's also Oregon like- was just, like, men versus boys, man. That yeah. was... Well, it's Baylor, right? Baylor, sorry. It's, it's Baylor was men versus boys. It's um, it's a crapshoot, though. That's kind of that's just what March Madness is in general. It's like, I could, there could also be a scenario in an alternate universe where we're like, Colgate dominated Baylor, and it was amazing. You know, we just we picked the wrong team, and, you know, we move on. Kind of double fucked me too, because I then thought Baylor was the best basketball team <laughs> yeah. on earth. So they got, they got against like Clemson. Clemson, I bet them <laughs> minus four and a half yeah. uh, on the DraftKings they Sportsbook, got crushed. and they got killed. Yeah. So I kind of double fucked me throughout the whole weekend. Cole had too many Frankie Borelli's running around, unfortunately, and I was we, like, it's just, yeah, we're, it's just, we're, it's, it's, tough. Tough. it's not going to work. It's not no. going to work. No, that's a that's a losing. It works formula. in the Patriot League, but <laughs> aside from that. Dude, I was scrolling through their yes. Twitter, and it was like they won the Patriot League four times in a row. It's That's like the thing. only like team had ever. A, I was like, these guys are winners. It was and they coming back, sucked. and like they win, they win their conference, and like they they're used to winning. It was just mm. right when we turned it on, and, and they said Baylor was uh, there was a word they kept using like ultra 
ultra athletic they kept using for Baylor. This team's ultra athletic, which was just saying just like Colgate's not. Just, yeah, that's right. They just scored it is so what it is. Good kids. They good just, kids. Good kids. I like the presser before they're, you know, a little shout out, but yeah, they they just were worse athletes. So um the Iowa women's team, I'm watching them right now as we're recording. There's twenty three seconds left. They're up by six on West Virginia. Caitlin Clark's last game at Carver Hawkeye Arena. Very emotional. Um, but barring a disaster here, they're gonna win this game and and head to the Sweet Sixteen, which is very exciting. She's amazing, man. Like she I is. feel She's like I didn't get dialed in too much to to her toward until the end of this run. Must have been really fun to watch her for the last four years. It's incredible. I mean, she can shoot from anywhere. She shoots the lights out of the building. I'm not breaking any news with this. She's the all-time leader. But, man, like even today, I was just watching it on the plane next to Trent, and it's like she's she's doing these, like, pull-ups and these step-backs from the logo, and it's just with ease, and the, they're daggers. And it's it sparks up all these debates. I was having debates with my buddies. Like, if you just – I get that – men's and women's sports like you can argue it all the time and like usually they're like the women has no chance to play in the men's sport but like i was just saying aside from her trying to make a men's team if you just took that caitlin clark and threw her on a men's division one and you put her on a pretty skilled team that was able to draw defenses to other skilled athletes and you just kept dishing her the ball she can drain a couple fucking threes on any court in the world i would think like, so. i get that you have a six six huge athletic guy coming after her instead of like a five ten like woman that maybe like doesn't have the reach that the man does but the way that she's able to create her own space off the dribble if she can figure it out off the screens she she can knock it down from anywhere man if like you can get her open which would be coming yeah. off the screens in the men's game she can shoot she can yeah, shoot she in any can. gym and she, now, she wouldn't make way. the team that's not the argument i'm saying i'm just saying it's really impressive what she does and uh, the women's basketball game is real. Like the way that the viewership's going up, oh, the it's fucking huge. stadiums Dude, the numbers are sold have been out. Awesome. That UConn stadium was sold out to the fucking brim of that place. And then the next, so it was ESPN. It was the UConn game they won against Syracuse, I think it was. And then the Iowa game was right after it. Both stadiums completely packed out. Oh. Like peak viewership. Like that's fucking women's Dude, college basketball. Are you kidding me? If I Iowa... went from 4.4 million to 9.8 million. <laughs> that's so awesome. If Iowa wins this game, which I think they're gonna, and then they play Colorado in the Sweet 16, if they win that game, and then LSU wins their next game, oh. it's Iowa LSU in the Elite Come 8, on. which is gonna be massive. I believe Dave Portnoy is on record saying he is going to that game Didn't if it happens. Be like the most watched college basketball game. Dude, it's if that oh, but words is not it's kinda, something like that. It's kind of crazy that that rematch is happening. If it happens in the Elite Eight, you would think that would happen in the Final Four. But if that game happens, that will be a massive, massive game. There was so I don't know. The men's were playing um, at the Iowa ar- Arena, right? Like it was it was hosting some men's games because I saw them all trying the Caitlin Clark shot yeah, from that spot on the court and, like, none of them could hit it. I mean, obviously, it's not game scenario, but it just shows you, like, she's so fucking impressive, man. Yeah, and I think certain skill sets can absolutely translate in certain sports and be incredibly effective. Like, in golf, like, Lexi Thompson in that PGA Tour event in the fall yeah, was one – she missed the cut by one stroke. Yeah. And it was, she kind of, like, made a couple of mistakes down the, down the stretch. And again, in certain sports, it's like if a if a sport's incredibly like physical, then there's just certain limitations, yeah. and there's going to be a bigger you get gap. crushed on defense. Like but it wouldn't even be but close. the point is, like like you're saying, like Steph Curry obviously like has changed the entire game. If you can shoot to a certain level, I think you could be effective, and you're 100 percent right. It's obviously very very difficult to fucking get it over somebody who's six six versus somebody who's five ten. We all kind of understand that, but drain and fuck it. It's just, Buckets. it's just, it's just her her depth, like where she's able to hit, hit from, it, and you know the comparisons have been made. She's the she's the female Steph Curry. She just shoots from everywhere, yeah, and she can shoot from any position, from the hip. Where it's fucking incredible. And I just, yeah, I guess I'm late to the party. I mean, she's like been the most popular thing in sports for a long time, and in college sports for a long time. I just, uh, yeah, I've been pretty mesmerized by it. It's almost like I don't want it to end. The Iowa Hawkeyes have won the basketball. Yeah, game. that's exciting. We're well, to the it's Sweet Sixteen. There, that's incredible. That's I mean, that's our last game. They didn't game play Carver, that great, right? Like that was. Like, it, it was a pretty. Like, it was a very low, very scoring, low game. scoring game. I mean, they averaged like ninety-two points a game, and I think they scored like fifty-eight in this game or something. Wow. Like that. That's fun. That's so, fun for Iowa. Um, the, the, the entrances were sick. They have the fire on the court. Like she's just she, <laughs> she's great for the sport, man. Yeah, if you're if you're an Indiana Fever fan. Get ready because the, she's going to get drafted by them. They got the number one overall. And the Iowa pick. State has has a problem on their team, right? In the women's game, yeah, 
She's yeah. an absolute weapon, like just like, dominating the paint. Have you seen this girl? Oh yeah. Oh my god. I I was got some got so it's got some uh, got some. We got some hoopers. Some hoopers going. <laughs> we got some, we got some hoopers. Look at this. Last game at Carver. Nobody Everyone cares. Crying. This happened last night. So people no, are no. To Trent, it. You know, people are mm. listening to it now. And there goes West Virginia. They're all waving. They seem mm. somewhat happy. Yeah, but. they're kind of accepted. Um, yeah, that's nice. Dude, yeah. when I went and saw when I went and saw Caitlin Clark play at Rutgers, Iowa played at Rutgers. Um, she had a triple double, incredible game. They won by a million. But the most interesting part of the game was after where everybody stays because all these most like most of the crowd is their parents and like young girls who they just want to see Caitlin Clark. They have signs, they have jerseys, they have all this stuff. And after the game, nobody leaves and she runs around and signs autographs for an hour. Wow. And just like going up to the crowd, taking pictures, she just can't get away from it. And she, I mean, she could easily just run off the court and be like, "I'm done." But she sticks around and just signs as many things as she can. She's awesome, man. She's she's unbelievable. I and mean, she, I hope that her success continues in the WNBA. It's just the yeah, WNBA hasn't gotten to that point where it's like it takes over the nation as college does. Apparently, um, you need somebody like her. You need someone like her for sure. But I mean, I don't blame her for soaking in every single moment. No, like, you this have is her to. peak. You'd think. Um, and she's you know, also setting all time records and shit. The world we're living in now, she's making a shit ton of money. Yeah. Oh, That's yeah. Good. That's good. She's making yes. a killing. And she signed the big, like, the big state farms and Gatorade Huge. and Nike. And, good. like, yeah, she's she's cashing in for sure. Uh, they got to win now, right? She's a golfer. She's a big golfer. We got to get her on. We would love to have her on. What was that? John Deere? She was out there? Trying? Yeah, she played we're with uh, Clark on, Zach man. Johnson at, in the Pro Am. This episode is brought to you by Body Armor Zero Sugar. You got to stay hydrated, folks. Hydration is just incredibly key. A lot of people focus in on that these days. Have to. If you're outside playing golf, you're sweating. It's going to be 85 in Florida this week. Maybe you're just out there having a couple beverages, adult beverages. That's going to make you a little bit dehydrated. Get hydrated. And the way that you do it, the brand new Zero Sugar Sports Drink from our great friends at Body Armor provides real hydration with no, and I mean no, artificial sweeteners, flavors, or dyes. Whether you're looking to stay hydrated, recovering from a long weekend, Body Armor Zero Sugar has got you covered. They got great tasting flavors like fruit punch and lemon lime. I asked a question today to Trent. I said, do you think people in colder climates are more dehydrated just because... It's a little bit harder to drink like a cold glass of water. Like today, we were a little bit freezing on the golf course, and you, you you dug in, you grabbed a cold body armor, and it was just like I wasn't even. When you're hot, you're just you're, dude. You're, the warm Barstool Classics we go to, I go through like ten of those bottles and, of water. And, and, I barely and, drank one today. You're right, and your urine is like completely, completely see through, and it's clear. And then today, I was like completely dark yellow, and I'm oh. thinking to myself, like I'm so dehydrated. So I grabbed a zero sugar body armor super drink and it set it, it brought me back it's a fail safe it's a cheat code where it's like i realized because i was cold i was bundled up i didn't drink water since i woke up i right. really it was from 8 a.m until it was from 7 a.m until 3 p.m and it's like you gotta be hydrated and these zero sugar body armors the lemon lime one specifically are just like oh man i'm back like i did it i'm back i have electrolytes and I'm ready. I'm I uh, I'm making an effort every time we do one of these classics. You're outside. You're up on your feet. You're sweating. You're talking. You clearly get dehydrated. You're pretty, usually coming off a weekend, which means I'm definitely going to be dehydrated to drink at least one, if not two, of the Body Armor Zero mm -hmm. Sugars, and it makes an enormous difference. You're able to get through the whole day. You're able to do these 11 o'clock at night podcasts, no problem whatsoever. So Body Armor Zero Sugar is available in stores nationwide. Head on over to the Body Armor store on Amazon and get yours today. That is Body Armor Zero Sugar. I watched the Zach Johnson uh, full swing episode. What'd you think? It was fucking weird, man. They were bullying that guy around that table, man. I just didn't like it. It oh. felt real weird, man. I felt, felt so fucking bad for Keegan Bradley. I mean, shout out to the editing team because you can just do it with music. The way that they were, they were playing mischievous, like, 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 clue type music every single time it was at that house with Spieth and JT and Zach Johnson, and then it was just. The saddest he ripped of his heart out. ripping your heart out stuff when Ugh. it came to Keegan. He wants that so bad, almost a little too much. He wants it. He wants it so bad, Keegan Bradley. He he can't 
he can't even focus on anything else in his life except for the Ryder Cup. It's like that guy. That's the way they made it look. Yeah. Um, I think it's true too because we've had him on. We had him on the show. He loves. And he it was so very much, much he's that way. Such a good guy. He is. He's so wholesome. He's so genuine. And that's not. It's just you struggle because they took away the facts of like why JT also got picked. It wasn't just because he's friends with Zach Johnson. Like I was almost feeling bad for JT also the way that they were portraying it, where it's like. You can't just forget that this guy is arguably one of the best Ryder Cup players. Well, it's like it's like in Moneyball. Ever. It's like in Moneyball when they're showing the A's winning streak and they don't mention the pitching staff at all. Right? They're like, yeah. oh no, it's because Billy Scott Bean and, and 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 those guys. It's because of the stats. And it's like, no, bro. They had. If you go back and look at that pitching, that that rotation is crazy. Was Barry Zito there? Yeah, he was there for Mark, sure. Mark Mark uh, Hudson, Mark Hudson. Uh Mark Hudson? Was it Mark Hudson? I'm just naming guys that I think that played on that team. It could be. Hudson? But I, Tim Hudson maybe? But it's the same thing what you're saying. Like they just stripped Whenever away I all the Whenever I say a name and no one knows it, I always think like I did I just name a porn star's name. You know, it's something <laughs> that like I shouldn't have said. <laughs> Johnny Sins was in that rotation. <laughs> <today. laughs> um but yeah, no, you're right about the JT thing with the full swing. They really, they really, they made just it stripped look. it down. But it's like, and we've talked, we talked about it a couple weeks ago, where it's like, largely he made Zach Johnson made the right decision. So yeah, yeah um, and they, I, you know, I do think they kind of brought it back a little bit by showing JT, yeah, yeah, doing like rallying the troops. You know, he's getting people fired up. He kind of was the center of the team, uh, and they also like, I mean, Patrick Cantlay out of that kind of came off like a hero. Yeah, when. I don't know that he's the most liked guy in the world of golf. Uh, but you're right, man. The ZJ stuff just – It was just – It was tough. And was, th- those are like – like Spieth's a funny guy, like bringing that up. Like that's that – they, funny. They're, he's just – when you are tight with a guy like that, I mean, listen, every captain in the world of sports has had friends that they've had, like whether it's – uh, you know, parents were best friends with the with the co- head coach, and like it's just the reality situation. He has better relationships with some people than others, and and uh, Keegan was very open about that in our in our show and on on full swing because he said, "I'm just not one of those guys that's in the boys' club. I'm just not." And at some point, that is like that's gonna not get you on teams. It's always been the way of the world. It's nuts that we had him on so recently shortly after that all occurred and he oh, told yeah. us about all of it and then yeah. still watching it was i even want to watch the episode like I, I, know. I stopped my binging and was like i don't know if i'm ready to watch this episode. netflix should have included the part that he told us where like netflix told him you're about to get a call from zj and he got his whole family up got them ready the wife put on makeup and put and did her hair and the kids all got set up and they're like this is our ride a cup moment the cameras are here it's 8 30 in the morning they woke us up for a reason and it was just to tell him that he did not make the team that <laughs> fucking hurts and they had to do it netflix has been great they've been absolutely killing it it's I said, I said to Hannah, we were watching, and I'm like, this is, like, amazing that they've made golf this drama-filled and so, so watchable. Yeah. They've done such a good job on that show. I mean, they've talked, you know, I mean, think about that show, how they've done such a good job with it that Joel Damon, it's dramatically affected his, his life, life, how yeah. famous he is. I never thought that the way that they, like, did it in each episode where like they, each episode has the waste management in it and each episode has the players in it and yeah. all this stuff like i thought if i was piecing it together i would never think to do it that way i would almost go chronologically as the year goes on and i think it's fucking brilliant the way they did it yeah because you're seeing all the different lenses of the same season and they always they pretty much always contrast something with another thing a lot yeah. of times that's one golfer and another golfer yeah but it could be an event it's the team you're up versus team you know and that contrast and then taking all that through event after event and like you said seeing an event that you've already seen through a completely different lens of a different player is how they've kind of humanized all the golfers and the whole thing that they go through so yeah i mean i know we've talked about it a lot but yeah but full swing they did a great job with it i'm glad you did you enjoy the episode i did and the yeah. fitzy one was great too Hard to watch in the beginning, but like tears of joy at the end. Crying. I was crying. Yeah. I was crying at the Fitzpatrick's at the end. It was hard when he was struggling out there in the Zurich. Really hard. It was brutal. Uh, but yeah, that, that really was struggling. Really Missing greens by like um, that first. Like, I don't know if they like edited it to make it look that bad, but that first like green, his dad's like, uh, people better watch out. He says, his dad said something like, people better watch out around here. And then he just blasted one into the crowd. It's like, holy shit. Uh, all right. Um, 
from the gallery. We got quite a few from the galleries to rip. I've got one too, actually. That oh, I want to ask you came you with your own. Yes, yeah, so we'll get to one of the fan ones now, and then I'll I'll hit mine after. Um, from the gallery, I believe is that brought to you by our great friends at Taylor Made Golf. Uh, on Thursday. Oh, on Thursday. Yeah. Right now, it's just brought to you it's by just us. Brought, yeah, it's just by Barca Sports. We'll still shout out Taylor Made Golf. Of course, Taylor Made Golf. Love Taylor Made Golf. QI10, QI10 Max, QI10 LS. Things awesome. Forgiving. Uh, quest for 10k inertia it's awesome go check it out taylormadegolf.com email us um foreplay at barcelosports.com that's how you submit a from the gallery put from the gallery in the uh subject line we've actually gotten a bunch of submissions over the last uh couple weeks that have really uh spicing things up that's why we're able to now go through these quite a bit more um we're gonna start with michael Michael says, I'm a shower at night guy. All my friends are shower in the morning, guys. Mm. We always argue about this. I cannot understand possibly going to bed dirty. Hmm. What are your guys' thoughts? Yeah, this is an interesting one. I mean, ever since I, I'm a shower in the morning guy, I, I mean, when I was a kid, I feel like your parents are like, just shower at night so we don't have to do this in the morning. Like, that is that is what it is. But I can't now as the way I've been doing it for so long, which is shower in the morning, I can't imagine waking up mm -hmm. and not showering. That's it, Trent. You yeah. know what? I, I, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm a, you have to shower in the morning guy. And that if something happens late at night or you're sweaty throughout the day, then you have to shower both. Like you have to shower at night and in the morning. If I put sunscreen on, I shower at night and in the morning. I have yeah. no problem showering at night in the morning. I do it all the time. Like, I don't think that, you know, you're talking nine, ten hours apart. You know what I mean? You shower at 10 o'clock at night. You go to sleep at 12. You wake up at 830. You freaking 8 o'clock. You shower oh, in the morning. I would say showering at night and in the morning is far more normal in my eyes than just showering at night. I Correct. Just, waking up is, I. there's no way I feel you're, good enough. You're farting on yourself all uh, yeah, night. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm just, sweating. I, I'm, I have severe sleep apnea. I'm choking in the middle of the night, you know, throwing up on myself. Like, I, I'm, I got to shower all that off in the morning. I'll do it without shower in the morning. Not frequently, but I'll do I it. I can't, man. I, I you, don't remember. you shower that. at night. If I shower at night. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't would remember never the last do. time I did it. But if I'm like, if I'm in one of those, I'm getting ready to go to bed, but you know what? I feel like I really need to shower. And then I wake up, especially with the kind of working from home, it's just a podcast day. I'll just roll right in to throw some clothes on. I'm not really going out anywhere. I'm just going to fire up the laptop and see your guys' dome pieces on my laptop Oh, that's, some, that's not, different, Not though. too worried about it. If I'm it. not leaving the house, I could definitely roll right yeah, in. Yeah, I would do that on a Saturday and a Sunday. I would just wake up and not, yeah. not shower. But if I'm going to the office, I'm going to do something, I'm showering in the morning. Absolutely. If I'm seeing a stranger, I'm showering. <laughs> what if that's just to get a coffee or something? You don't drink coffee. I don't drink coffee that much. Um, yeah. I mean, if, if your plan is to just go get the coffee and come back, I don't see an issue with that. It's just about how you're going to feel for that whole day. Like, if I'm just lounging, I don't have to shower to lounge. I don't have to shower to just, like, go downstairs and be an absolute, like, ball of garbage and <laughs> put on my, you know, Islanders, like, Snuggie and, like, watch, you know, hockey or a movie. I don't have to shower for that. I, I'm just going to continue to be disgusting. But if I'm going out and out, out, come on. That's crazy. I agree with that. I would shower for that. Today's episode is brought to you by 8 Sleep, the high tech solution to your age old sleeping issue. 8 Sleep's Pod 3 cover slips right over your mattress, bringing heating and cooling tech that keeps you comfortable and sleeping deeper for a better, more restful night. You can go to 8sleep.com slash four and get $250 off plus free shipping on the pod cover by 8sleep. This thing is amazing. The technology on it is awesome. The fact that you can just pull up the app, make it cold, make it hot. It goes from, I believe, 55 degrees to 110 degrees, I think, is about how high it goes. Yeah. Uh, it, it's amazing. I've got the app right here, as you can see right here on the GoPro or in the thing. My bed, I'm not in it right now. Can you see that? There you go. My bed, yeah, I'm not in it right now. It's 74 degrees. Dangerous showing your phone like that. In case something, you know, I know. Well, I don't, yeah, I know. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 74 degrees Fahrenheit, out for it. 73, and then it's going to get to 91. This is based off of my sleep yesterday. The, the room must have been a little bit colder last night, so it knows to make it a little bit higher. If the room is hot, that bed's getting down to 68, 67 in the morning. It knows it's going to be cold. It's going to get up to 100. I'm actually right now in front of you. I'm going to turn my side of the bed off 
Oh, so my my bed is now off, so it's not using any of that energy, and Hannah's side of the bed will stay on. It's able to just adjust That's based insane. off the fact that I'm not there. I'm I all the have way one that does this. And I can't she believe it. She doesn't go full like I'm I'm alone in this bed tonight. I'm just going to use the whole thing. It's a king size bed. It's pretty big. It's it's Fair. it's very spacious. I don't know it's that nice. she's like sprawling all the way out. You know, I mean. It, Fair enough. Well, she's I... tying herself to like the bed post or something and <laughs> getting quite crazy. Not but... what I said. No, you know what I'm saying. Like <laughs> who knows? Like not you know? what I said. <laughs> I'm just I'm just picturing someone just sprawled out. I don't know. Like I don't even know if she could do it. So yeah, it is what it is. We'll just keep that in there. I guess. <laughs> keep that Talking in there. Talking about bed totally temperature. Cool. You know. I was <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> <laughs> I've literally just met uh, like when I oh, like man. I when I have a full hotel bed to Woo! myself. It's, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Do you lay right in the middle of it, Trent? Oh, I'm a I'm a one side guy. What Same. side are you guys? I'm on the right side of the bed. Wait. I'm in the like middle. if I'm if I'm laying on my back, I'm on the right side Same of the bed. Same every time, no matter what room I'm in. Same. I'm in like the middle hotel room or my room. I'm a I mean I, I'm a single man. I know I think Riggs you're my, you're single too, but yeah. I still I sleep in the middle of the bed. <laughs> you do? Yeah. I don't know why I can't help but I sleep on the right side of my right bed. Right side. That's it's interesting. Big so king weird. Bed. Like even in like a, a, even in a small bed in a hotel room that may, may, maybe is like a twin or like a full, you know what I mean? I still favor that right side. There's Same. something, I get in on the right side. Put my phone on the nightstand on the right side. Even when I was living alone, right I did that. Wow. What are you, what are you just you three wheeled on which you, side of the bed you're going to lean to? Don't you have a nightstand? Don't you have a nightstand? free love in that bed, <laughs> Do you have like a nightstand where you like you have all your shit, your water, Yeah, your but I don't. Phone. Which side's that go on? to lean towards Whichever that side? side I feel like uh, when, when I'm <laughs> in that room. It's a field which, thing? It's not. You're yeah. moving it? You're what moving you it around? When you're lifting it over and bringing it to the <laughs> No, left. I'm saying it's never consistent in each hotel room. No, this doesn't feel right. I'm going to put it on the left side. No, it's never consistent in every hotel room. It's not right side every time. like your living space. Where oh. you tend to lean toward? In terms of where I lay on the bed? No, no where like, you put like, your where, stuff. Where do you put all your shit? Your oh, right side, right side. Yeah, okay. So right that's side. What, yeah, you lean right. Go to 8sleep.com <laughs> slash four. Get $250 off plus free shipping on the pod cover by 8sleep. Matt says, who is more likely to complete the career grand slam first? Rory McIlroy, John Rahm, or Scotty Scheffler? Well, Rory's the closest, right? Rory's what, the closest. What's Rahm have? An Open and a Masters? Yep. So he's 50%, and Scotty's got... Just the Masters, I believe. Is that right? Uh, Yeah. Right? No. Yeah. Yeah, because he won the players twice. That's right. Yeah, can I mean, I so throw he... Brooks in there and just have that be my answer? You can throw Brooks in there. Brooks still has to win, too. He's got to win the British Open and the... Uh... The Masters. Yeah. He has a problem in the majors, man. He is such a problem. It is surprising he hasn't clipped off one of the... I guess the, the British Open's not as surprising, but the Masters, you would think. He's been close, obviously. He's been right there. Yeah. The Tiger one, man. Oh, he's right there. When you go back and watch all that, it's like a miracle that we avoided that guy. He had so many chances. Um, but I think he, the answer is you got to take the chalk with Rory, right? He's only need one. I think, he it's, needs one. I think it's Rom. Really? Yeah. See, I can see the argument that it's Scotty. As That's, crazy as that sounds, he dude, he's got to win three. Just he's got to win know. three Rory majors has and different one ones. foot across the finish line. Scotty just got off the start line. I know, but like, and I, I know feel he's like sprinting. We could be three months away from being like Scotty if he just wins the British Open. He wins the, the tortoise and the hare. Thing. Like, like R- R- Rory is the tortoise, and he nope. No. Rory's the hare that went all the way out there. Nope, I'm I'm wrong. I'm just <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> You know, wait, 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 wait. I'm trying to picture a cartoon where is there's Rory like a the think, tortoise or is he the hare? I think he's the hare. I no. think, yeah, uh, I don't know because I'm in my in my brain. Oh, I'm, he's the hare. He's, he's the hare. hare. He's You're the right. Hare. He's, he's there. He he's went there. ripping out there, and yes. now he's just asleep. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and here comes Scotty just trotting along. Right, like the argument obviously is it would for Rory, but it would be like he got he's like the guy who was winning the race. And then as soon as he got right before the finish line, he sat there for 10 years. And people are like, is this guy ever going to cross that line? Yeah. It's like getting weird incredible. that he's just sitting there now. And then I think it's Rom. I really, I mean, he just needs the two. I play this horse racing game at my house. And it's like you have all these little horses on this board. And you roll the dice. I think I talked about this. But you roll the dice. And if you roll a seven and then you had the seven card, you move the seven one dot. Okay. So sometimes, like, you know, if the 12 
will only have two dots or four dots and the seven will have 15 because the seven is way more common. Yep. But that's like kind of what I'm picturing with Rory where it's like the 12 got out and like you're sitting on that finish line and the whole entire table is like, we just need one more 12 <laughs> and we win. But like the odds are so much worse now than the seven and the seven is just slowly you, like every roll is a seven, seven, seven. You're like, how is the seven gaining distance or gaining all of this gap? on the 12 and it's just math like the math is working out that the the seven's the better card the better horse the 12's never coming back ever you got lucky already it's not getting across it does seem like it's a nuts thing to not say rory but you also realize that like if he just doesn't win the masters then right it's only you, one chance yeah it's like it's he gets one chance yeah. true to do it whereas these other guys it could be two years you know are you like is Rory guaranteed to win the Masters in the next three years? Yeah, I know. So then you're like, well, if the answer is no, it's like Scotty might have a career Grand Slam by then. John Rahm might have a career. So it's a tough, it's a tough one. <laughs> I honestly think I might say Scotty. That's wild, but it's, it's he's not so crazy. much better than everybody else. He is. That's true. That How is, is he true. not going to win? Um, it's true. So I had my own question from uh, from the gallery. Oh, when I was at TPC. Um, Sugarloaf? Sawgrass oh. with my buddy Big Rob. We were walking around, and it was his first time, like, in the ropes. And I'm like, man, you're about to see 17 at Sawgrass. This is fucking – this is it, man. This is the hole. Like, this is crazy. And we started talking about all the holes in golf, and we've done that on this podcast before. What's the most iconic hole? And as you kind of go through the list, they're all par threes, you know? Like, you really – you think about these massively popular across, like – all generations and all sports fans, if you just say seven at Pebble and you say 12 at Augusta and you say 17 at Sawgrass, and it got me thinking like, what, what is the top five non par three holes that like, when you tell just a generic sports fan, okay, what's that hole? Do they be like, immediately they know. First one, 18 at Pebble, six at Pebble. So aren't you getting like just a little no, too specific I don't of think, like I don't that's the one six. with the cliff and it's the par five it's the, like uh, it's not like as I cut you know what I'm saying though like you know I know exactly what you're par saying par threes are not as I wonder why that is is that because like, like you're able gratification to, you're able to curate yeah like the shot dude I gotta right? be honest I think it's because you can just like put the whole entire hole in like one image yeah like, yeah three. that's right like, humans are so dumb we're, but it's so, true. Like, <laughs> we're just like here's a tee box here's the green I could see the golfer I could see the end point and that's it that's the most iconic hole um like even cypress like you just like it's all par three 16 man. 15 and like, 16 yeah like what's the most famous par four in the world i don't know <laughs> i don't I think know it's probably oh god i guess beth page one, one of them, like if yeah. <laughs> yeah right it's got to be 18 at the old course but i right you know oh, fair yeah. but that's you know why not one like it's, <laughs> yeah i know Right, right out the road hole. Like, why not the hole right before like, it? That one's awesome. I think about my friends who are big golf fans, but like, don't know like the vast majority of all the holes and the intricate details of all these historic golf courses. They they just know the big stuff. And if I showed them just, or if I said like, I don't know, I just, I just say six at Pebble. I don't know that it's like it hits as much as the seventh hole at Pebble Beach. And for you know some reason, got, that just fucking hits you in your spine. You know what you got to think about is. It's all, like think of what's the like, it's Tiger Woods. So like he makes things famous. Right. So like what holes would he have made famous? He's made a lot of them famous, obviously. But uh, <sighs> that's what makes me think of six at Pebble is him on the is him on the hill. Right? Yeah, hitting that seven iron. Yeah. from the rough. Right. That's a good point. It's uh, almost not the hole. It's what's happened there. It's gotta have like an iconic look too. I that mean, sounds like a point star thing too. I know six does. It's almost like as stupid as it is, it might not even be a major championship par four because they're not there as often. It's like the 18th at Bay Hill where Tiger made putt year after year, like with the rock wall, you right. know, and like the 18th even at at Sawgrass. It's like I'm you're thinking, thinking of these holes. 18 at Tory, but that's because of Tiger too. I think the answer mm, hitting over the hotel at St Andrews. Yeah, St. Andrews is probably... St. Andrews is so iconic. It's the first and the 18th. That duo, that the bridge, that helps. Yeah, yeah it's broken. a tough one. It's tough. It's, um, yeah, and I, I, I think that the mental side of like what you asked, where it's like, why is it part three, is simply because it's just easier. It is funny when we went through all the holes, or we went through the courses, right, and we like, by the time we got past the first three or four, and we are like, there's really nothing else that's even like, in the ballpark and it's sort of similar that way when you get from part threes to part fours and i know a lot of people 
listening are probably pulling their hair out saying like, oh, 11 at Augusta or 18 at Augusta. But like, I don't think any of those are a clear answer. No, no. If you're like you're, you're like Frankie's saying, if you're talking about a ca- like casual sports fans, they wouldn't. I mean, they would know because it's Augusta, but they wouldn't be like, oh yeah. Well, I guess I don't my think side they would either. To someone saying eleven and eighteen and all these is like, well, if we're just like throwing out just like really great, amazing holes, I can also just if you're gonna name every single non par three at Augusta, I can name every single par three at Pebble and St Andrews. But that's not the question. Like, yeah. it's that one hole that hits you in the ball sack. Where you're just like, wow, that's the most famous hole in the world, and I don't, I don't think there is one that is similar to a par three. I don't think there's a par four that's similar to a par three. No, maybe I don't think eighteen so. at Pebble, maybe, and, and and maybe eighteen at St. Andrews. Right, maybe those are the only two, and those are like the two most famous courses in the world. Right, and we're saying maybe on those. I do think if you showed anyone a picture from the tee shot on eighteen at either St. Andrews or Pebble. They know. Any sports fan, for the most part, is going to know yeah, that. They know. But I still don't think they're as iconic as 12 at Augusta, as 7. Everyone's going to know 17 at Sawgrass. Everybody. Everyone. Everyone. The video, it's just, it's it's the cover of, like, everything. It's in it's in every accountant's, like, uh, office. It's, right, like, right. It's everywhere. And same with 7 at Pebble. Same right. with, like, it's literally I got 7 everywhere. at Pebble painted in my house. Shout right. out Tim Smith Art. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah, it is true. Par 3s just put asses in seats. They do. I'm sure there are some holes that we're not thinking of, but it's even like, oh, the biggest Pinehurst guy in the world. I don't think like 18 at Pinehurst like is again. It's it's moments based. That's a, yeah. that's the Payne Stewart hole. Like, Payne Stewart, but it's still like if that was once in the history of golf. I don't know that it gets you know it needs another moment or something. You need Tiger to make a putt there, and then everyone's like, oh, I remember that. But but even like take seven at Pebble. Like, what's the most iconic moment that has happened there? I can't even really think of one. Right, that's just hole base. Like, that's just a hole. Uh, yeah, it's just an amazing hole. But it's it's, it's built. That's right. It's just perfect. Yeah, like Tiger. I we never he didn't ace that hole. He didn't. No, you know it's God like made that. it with like his pinky finger or something. Like, <laughs> it's something literally happened made. Out there. Oh, yeah, it's it's carved. Something happened out there from the ocean. The, the the whoever's doing the simulation like really went crazy on that build. I think the way that becomes bar none. I think I talked about this with somebody. Maybe it was during the dad bot. Maybe it was one of you guys. The way that becomes bar none the most famous hole in golf is if the ocean washes it away. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Is if the ocean just takes uh-huh. it. And we're like, remember seven at Pebble? <laughs> and we're like, yeah, we had it. And then there was just, it, it's it's gone. It genuinely might. When you're standing there, you're like, this almost shouldn't be here. If there's a hole that's going to get eaten by the ocean, it's seven at Pebble. Uh, that's a good question, though. Yeah. I'm sure people are going to flood Oh, our Twitter responses and our emails. But however you make this, if you're going to make this a, a um, like a clip, you can't just end it of like there are like of us saying there are no famous par fours. Like we're saying there's a billion of them. I just don't know that one of them stands out singularly like seven at Pebble, like 12 at Augusta, like 17 at Sawgrass. There's not that one par four or par five. Like, right. I love the fourth hole at Beth Page. I think it's like the greatest par five yeah, and I heard, ever. It reminds but me too not. that a lot of this is regional because I heard Jonesy say that too. And oh, that yeah. hole's like one of my favorite holes in the That's world. That's the most picturesque hole probably at Beth Page. But um, like my buddies from York. back in St. Louis, you showed them that oh, they wouldn't even know right. what, no. what you're talking my about. My brother would be like, I don't know what this is. Yeah. They might yeah. know 17, which is like that bunker yep. with the crazy, the, the green with the crazy bunkers. At they Beth might know 18 because the finishing hole. I was kind Honestly, of thinking the clubhouse like, does a lot. Yeah, the clubhouse like like Pinehurst eighteen does a lot. The the fact that it's they're going right to see that red building. roof and yeah. like the icon, you know, they're going to kind of see it. Uh, and I would say Augusta eighteenth, like that tee shot, that super you narrow should, tee you shot. Should know that people are probably going to know that, but I still don't think it is quite on the same tier as you know seven at Pebble. 13 in Augusta. 13 I mean, Augusta, it would cross my mind for it's sure like, it's up there. It's controversial to a degree. And that yeah, like and it, but it's definitely up there. But I almost. Oh, dude, 13 Augusta might be the most famous non par three. Just because of how it much it's be. in the news. It's in the they're news a lot. The tea, like They're buying land from the country club. Plus, it's, it's got such an obvious look to it. You know it's Augusta. You know which back, hole it is. The back of the it's green the looks like 12. Moment. Like everything. Yeah, man. I but I still it's pretty I weak. I know, I know. It's not twelve. It's a great hole, but it, in terms of the, in the context that we're talking about, it's weak. It might be the best hole in the world, but it's like still not it's up not there. Twelve. No. I would. I'd be so. 16. I mean, I'd be bad in general, but that hole is just not made for me. Thirteen. I would <laughs> no. slice it. Just oh, true. In the wrong that would direction. be. Yeah. You're not gonna hit a tight draw off that either. Not no, the one that Scotty so. just like hit that random out of control hook on. 
Is that 13 that he does that on? Yeah, where his feet go nuts. Just comes out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah, he hits. Yep, yep. He does. I can't wait to see that shot. Spring is right around the corner, which means golf season is here. This time of year, it can bring a wide range of temperatures. We saw that today with cool mornings and nights. And as always, our friends at Peter Millar have the perfect piece for your next round. The Merge Hybrid Jacket features a premium performance fabric that offers lightweight warmth and water resistance. Perfect for the season. This thing is an incredible item. I saw Trent rocking it a couple weeks ago. I think we were at Myrtle Beach. Yep. We were at Pebble Beach. We were at all the beaches where the weather can be turbulent. It can be beautiful. He was rocking that thing. It's just a delightful item. And then Peter Moore's got all of it. Shout out to Trent again. Walked in there today. He got what looks like one of the iconic Perth pullovers from Peter Millar. That's exactly right. In the pro shop at TBC Sugarloaf. It was right in the front, too. They know. The pro mm. shops know. It was. You didn't even have to look. Didn't have to ask anybody, oh, where's the Peter Millar stuff? Walk in the door, Peter Millar, bang, right there. I wonder why the Peter Millar's right up front. Hmm, interesting. I wonder many, why. Did you see how many compliments I got on this hoodie today? This like you got I don't a know bunch. what the name of this type of Peter Millar hoodie is, but it's got this type of design and fabric on it, and everyone was like, "That thing is special." Like it's clean. It's special. got a, It does. It has a different kind of feel to it, and it's got a different kind of look. So, Peter Millar just like top to bottom, and even in their in in their business, you got Todd Martin at the top of that thing, mm. and he just knows what he's doing. And best. if so you guys only just knew like just how good this man is at just <laughs> Just living life and just being Todd he Martin the and best. the fact that he's like making the decisions over there. It's uh <laughs> you know, it's just a it's a company that I, I feel very, very, very um proud and and I'm very fond of them that we have a relationship that we have. Be sure to head on over to petermillar.com slash foreplay. There is a link for that to check out the merge hybrid jacket as well as the rest of their performance outerwear offerings. Peter Millar, the official outfitter of the USGA. Head over to petermillar.com slash foreplay. And then the last thing I want to say before you get to the next one is um, if you sit at a window in a window seat on a plane and you don't lift up the, the window shade from takeoff to touchdown, I think you deserve to be put in jail. Well, wait, no, no, no. Yeah. You got a word that. You don't care what happens during the flight. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, like, during the takeoff, yep. if you're not opening up that shade, and during the descent and the and the landing, you could do whatever you want while we're up above the clouds. I don't need to see just, like, plain, just white sky when I'm out there. If you're not letting me see where I'm at while flying through this metal tube at fucking 400 miles an hour, if you're not going to give me that sense of, like, this is where I'm at and relative to the ground, I deserve to, like, Poke your eyeballs out. Why are you sitting there? You have a duty to let the people around you know where we're at. Yeah. I, I need to know. I, I What I, do you want to be surprised by the ground? No. What are you, an insane person? So we sat next to each other on this flight where this happened, and I couldn't agree with you more. Because the and the reasoning is for the reasons you listed, and <laughs> if you're touching down, if you feel like you're hitting something <laughs> yeah. in a plane, one of two things is happening. <laughs> one, you're landing. Two, you're dying. Right. So you, that's, we, I got to know where I'm at. I want to know. Those are very drastic differences. I want to know. And yeah, because on the plane we were just on, the people, I was in the aisle next to Frankie, who was in the aisle as well. And the shades were down in our row and we're looking back, like trying to oh, figure out where are we at in the, the sky. Well, and for me, I've, I've said before that if we are dying, that's fine. I just don't want the last thing I see be inside of this tube. Right. I want to see grass. Yeah. I want to see the outside world. I want to see the sun or the moon something, or whatever's happening. I just something. want to see something. I don't want to just my last thing these eyes saw was the inside of this fucking plane. You got you to gotta flip it up. And I know a lot of people <laughs> reached out saying, like, it's against the law to have it down. Then other people going after them saying that, no, you have to just be in the exit row. Has to be up or down. I don't know. My whole take <laughs> is that this motherfucker was, I don't know if he had anxiety about it because he just wouldn't lift it up. And he was twitching and he was nervous and it's like don't sit there man you know let's switch let's have a conversation i gotta see that's a guy that can't have control of like the aux cord he, he had too can't. much control over my life yeah today. you can't my, my, the, the lady like on to. my side was the opposite she like barely knew she was on an airplane 
she was just like, oh, we're up in the air, we're landing, whatever. She didn't even think about it. She was the least nervous person in the world. And that's the other side of it where she's like, I don't care. Oh, we're landing. Oh, well, I don't need to see that. It's like, we have to see that. Yeah, I'm not usually nervous, but when you close my vision, I become extremely nervous because we're hitting turbulence on the way down. And then all of a sudden we're just on the ground. <laughs> it's just like, yeah. that's an insane way to live. It really is. And it was a windy descent. So like, where am I on this earth? Yeah. So I'm with that's, you. On that. uh, that's all I got to say about that. <laughs> uh, John asks, where do you guys think Scotty's caddy, Ted Scott, ends up on the PGA Tour money list by the end of this year? Love the show. I did a quick little research on this. Scotty is currently number one on the money list this year. He's got $10.94 million in earnings thus far. It's not even April yet. Um, 1.94, which would be 10% of that would be 25th currently Jesus, on the PGA dude. Tour money list. That's that's when you know you're you're beating up the world you when are, your caddy is out earning guys on the tour. You are balling. I looked like JT was like around there, behind there this, this year in, in tour earnings. You think JT. 10% is just like across the board confirmed for these caddies? Every one of them appears to have a different arrangement. I think it kind of gets to 10%. For Some of the big guys have to have a salary, right? They they do. I know a lot of them too will pay a, your caddy their caddy a certain amount a week, right? A couple grand a week so that they're at least like not losing money, right? And then you know maybe a smaller percentage, and then a lot of them will do like I think a lot of them will do a standard like seven percent maybe, and then they do ten percent of like a win, right? Right? right. Oh, interesting. So yeah. when they win, they kind of get like bonuses and bumped up. Yeah. So who knows if that's a blanket 10%. But if we're just saying all caddies are getting 10%, that's where Ted Scott's at. Yeah. I mean, I think, um, fuck, I don't foresee Scotty stopping here at no. all. I, I think mean, that gap might be higher. I think he might at the end of the year be like top 20. That would be unbelievable. <laughs> I know. That would be unbelievable. Yeah. It's going to, because like if Scotty wins more of these elevated events, that you're talking three, four million. Right. right. He's going to win the big ones. That's the thing. He's only going to play. What if he wins a tour championship? It's like uh, $25 million, whatever that thing's at now. Right, which you would think he's going to win. So, Ted Scott, I almost want to just throw this in just to shout out. Like, Ted Scott's, if he's at 10%, is going to be over $2 million this year by the end of, like, the Masters. That's awesome. <laughs> That's unbelievable. It's a good spot. I mean, he's a great caddy. and he's Great with, caddy. He's, he's like, got a great player that doesn't seem to really – give him too much shit no i think um i think the two of them get along extremely well they're both god-fearing men yeah uh ted mm. scott does his like sunday sermons i believe that he puts out on social and then profanity and- doesn't turn a boy into a man somebody said that to me and frank you had a barstool classic <laughs> yeah last stop he yeah. just he just come some- on i've always said i've always said to my son that profanity will never turn a boy into a man. He did And say then he that. just hit his golf ball, and I was like, fuck you. <laughs> you know, it's just like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I had a guy today tell me that he had a putt that missed in like a putt off or on a clip or something from a Barstool class a couple years ago. And that uh, the clip, you know, went out on social and it was all over the place. And he said, you just, you killed the clip for my family, Riggs, because you said GD in it. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> you I know, said, what? <laughs> when we meet these people um, at, at these golf events we do the barstool classic all around the country it does make me feel awkward and upset when i actually see the people that are listening to the show and i picture them just like they got their little baby like crawling around the house or they got their little kid in the back seat of the car and they're trying to listen to their favorite golf show and i'm out here spewing all of this <laughs> poo poo and it's just like like today i met a great couple there's like a, a a nice cute couple that just really, really enjoyed the show. They're from upstate New York. Um, one's a Ranger fan. The other one, I think, was an Islander fan. And, you know, we got along. Like, we were having a good conversation. And they're like, we listen to every single show together. We yeah. drive in the car. We listen to every single show. And I'm just thinking, like, I'm sorry. Like, I, they're listening to this <laughs> right now. Sorry. I'm sorry <laughs> that you have to hear some of the stuff that I say. Because half of it's nonsense. And the other half of it is just fucking downright crude. You know? And it's like... You shouldn't be subjected to any of that, but you listen to it on your own on your own power. Yeah, I don't know. I'll try and be better with it because you know 
It's not nice. It's not nice to spread I that. I mean, I don't know. We've gotten this far. We've gotten this far. I know. I seem to enjoy it. It's just when you see it. You know what I mean? Is that a change it for you guys when you see it? I know what you mean. It? Yes. Yeah. I'm looking in their eyes. And they're like, I listen to every show. Especially and I'm thinking back to the stuff that I say. It's like, even on this show alone. Especially thinking about them like listening to it together. And they might have like awkward stares oh. between one another. They're like, what? What I are mean, they saying? I'll be straight honest with you. My mom listens to the show. So that's something I got to get over. She listens to every show? Every single one. My mom listens to every single and show. I'm sorry to her, too. Like, you what know. What the hell, Joy? Joy doesn't listen to any of this shit. <laughs> oh, my mom listens to it for sure. My dad doesn't miss a second. Really? My dad will not miss a second. He, he walks the dog and listens to the show and watches TikToks. On how to on how to beat the economy. <laughs> like, like, he doesn't know, he doesn't know what's going on. Yeah, I saw this TikTok. You gotta put your money in this. I'm like, I don't know, Dad. You know, <laughs> TikTok. Uh, you guys got a TikTok somehow. My mom listens to every show, and then she's in her car a lot. She does a, uh, the road trip from like St. Louis to Boulder quite frequently and back. Mm -hmm. And uh, she'll then, whenever she doesn't have a new episode, she'll go listen to old episodes and, like, call what? me and talk about old clips. She loves the show. Loves well, I don't it. think my family even knows what I do. There'll be at times, dude, where my mom would text me and she'd be like, great show with a heart. And I'm just like, I punch the wall. I'm just like, <laughs> fuck, so supportive. <laughs> because, uh, I, you know, we love them. We, we, we want them we to love be them happy. Very much. We don't want them to hear stupidness. Stupidness. <laughs> that was a joke. Okay. Um, <laughs> Spencer says, if four player were to host a live versus PGA tournament, what would the current teams and captains be? What course would they play? What would be your format choices? Because this right. is something we've talked about quite a bit. If we did a PGA tour versus live like Ryder Cup type yeah. thing. Um, essentially, the questions are, who would your captains be? Yeah. What would the teams look like? What course would be chosen? What uh, and what would your format be? I think you'd have to go pretty straightforward Ryder Cup format. Yeah. Um, you know, are we? I guess we can make the rules, but I'll throw it to you guys: playing captains or not playing captains? I think they got to be playing captains. I almost think no. Wow. Because then you then the pool even yeah, so, then the pool opens no, up. So I, yeah, liked, I like the no playing captain. Me too. I think you make Freddie Couples the captain of the of PGA and I think tour. You maybe okay. make Greg Norman the captain of the yeah. live. Wow. I think Greg Norman's got to be involved. Freddie Couples would be electric. He would he's be. Pretty, well, he's pretty chill, though. But, this but, is, but he's but he, anti-Liv. Right. He's, he's made he's, some tweets. He's fired off some tweets. Yeah, he's chill until you ask him about Liv. And then he would have some snide comments about... Oh, that's my... What do you guys think ooh, for Captain? Freddie Couples is a good one. Um, it's uh, obviously Greg Norman on the other side. Yeah, you're right. You're right. It would have to be Greg Norman. He'd be so... He's perfect. He's such a villain. Yeah. He really is great in that role. I'm trying to think, somebody from the PJ tour that would be kind of uh, VJ Singh. Fire. Like someone ran. Man, Freddie Couples is a really good one. How yeah. about Cass Singh playing at our tournament that last week? Cool. That was cool. We are like almost at um, Stream Song. It was just like driving in the middle of nowhere. By the way, it's it's yeah, never this, great when you go to a place like this and it's and it's dark. Like when you're driving there and it's dark. We're about the to see this, song. the Stream Song sign, sign for the first time in my life. Oh, cool. Look at this right here. Look to the right, Riggs. A guy at the golf course today said that so there it is. Um, oh, yeah. Patrick Mahomes walked into the post Super Bowl winning party with a stream song hat on. I didn't I didn't catch that at all. all right. Wow. Wait, so who's on this damn team? So let's let's just make Freddie Couples the captain. I think it's okay, a great consensus. one. Let's go Freddie, boom boom. You got Tiger Woods. Is he on the team? <sighs> For the okay. I mean, you got I, it. he's obviously my guy, yeah. top ten in the world. Are we not, we're not, why are we making him captain? He's got to play, man. I think we, we want him to play. Oh, true, 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 true. Um, Tiger Woods, Rory McIlroy. Scotty. Scotty Scheffler. Uh, Jordan Spieth. Shoffley. Shoffley. Cantlay. Cantlay, yep. Six. JT. Justin Thomas, seven. Keegan Bradley. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I know. Uh, no, so no, no, not. but no. Oh, um, mm -hmm. Wyndham Clark. Yep. Fuck, we're definitely missing somebody. Um, Victor Hovland. Yes, that's the one. It's nice when we get to take from Europe. I think that gets us at nine. Did we say we said Spade already, right? Yep. Um, I'm thinking like Colin Morikawa. Oh, yep, ten yep, for sure. Um, then we're kind of in that spot where it's like, are you taking a Harmon? Are you taking a Ricky? You taking Ricky? Are you taking hmm. like? Keegan, I mean, are you taking Burns? Sam Burns, man. The guy's got game. Burns would be a good one. He's a Ryder Cup guy. 
Okay. Beat Burnsy. the doors off of us. So we got one Beat more spot here, or no? We got one more spot in my life. Yeah, I mean, like, this is also I'm thinking in real time. This is going to be a graphic. Bush is going to put out, so we can't. I know. I'm not even. We're not even looking at. So I left Spieth off my top list. I'm looking that's at just a road. Right I'm not even. Look, we haven't even looked at names. No, no. We're just. That's top of the head there. Top of mind. I gotta look at like. I don't even know. Let me put up. Pull up the OWGR. That outdated, ancient, archaic. Max system. Homa. Yeah. Oh. For sure. How do we forget Max Homa? For sure. Max Good Homa. thing we didn't forget him there. That was <clears throat> big. He's All right. There. He's like Mr. Captain America. Max Homa. All right. I think that's a pretty damn good team. Yeah. Um, and now. Rom. Now we got to go to the live team. Rom. Brooks. Cam Smith. P. Reed. Patrick Reed. We left Aberg, Fitzy, Fleetwood. I'm okay with these. Cam Young. I'm okay with these. Hideki. Cam Young. Hideki would have been a good one. Hideki would have been a really good one. What's wrong with Cam Young? You okay with Tommy Fleetwood being left off our team? Uh, I don't feel great about it, Did no. Cam Young set some sort of record for finishing in second place, like, the most times? In, Without winning or something? Yeah. Yeah, he, he... There's some ridiculous stat he just set with finishing runner-up. Hmm. It's like a historic runner. He's a historic runner-up golfer. He just can't get it done. It's a lucrative position, it's but it's un- not that yeah. fulfilling. Who was it? Uh, was it Charlie Hoffman that was doing that for a while? And then he had the moment with his caddy where he was like, I'm just sick of it. I'm not here oh, to finish second. Then he got like, in the water or something the memorial. It so I, I think, honestly, the the American – I mean, the not the American. The PGA Tour team was the harder one to pick. The live guys, they just have their t- top 12 guys I that are that's like pretty, pretty straightforward. That's I think that's pretty right. Um, like all the twelve guys that we just know that went over there, I don't think I don't I don't think there's really much of a debate. Maybe like the eleven and twelve guys. And even then, you're gonna kind of almost be like, eh, whatever. Their top like eight are fucking. They're they're, they're strong, dude. Their top eight are no joke. They've got. They've obviously got. I mean, they've got Bryson. Yep. Yep. Um, Sergio. <clears throat> they've got. Cam Smith, although he's not playing like unbelievably well, but they got Cam Smith, who's um, foul. they've got uh, Joaquin Neiman, yeah, who's been unreal. They've got Taylor Gooch, yep, who was their top guy last year. Um, they've got. What's our plan here, Brendan? Are we like we in a it. house? Or are we are we in a hotel? What's the deal here? Right. This hotel we're this, in. This is a hotel. Oh, we're in hotels. Oh, it's like a big, it's a big, it's a lodge. Oh, we're lodging. Oh, you can see the rooms. Oh, that's not good for me. Shut those blinds. Oh, cool. Yeah, we're going to have to just keep driving around here. Just Just don't drive into a lake or anything. I just think Adrian Maronk would make the team. Dustin Johnson. DJ for sure. Tyrell Hatton. Yeah. Brooks Kepka. Yeah, he's going to be on the team for sure. Patrick Reed, you got to have him out there. Oh, you have to. It's a great event. Oh, someone came up to me today at the Barstool Classic and said, "Hey, man, are you going to keep doing the circle thing? We you can. think or you think we we're going to park? That. No we chance. Park we can park anywhere. Doing the circle. There's no one coming in here. Because um, I was about to puke. <laughs> we, um, <laughs> <laughs> Brandon just did, just was going around the circle like in uh, National Lampoon's European <laughs> Vacation, where he goes, Big Ben kids, and he just keeps on get, the team. He can't For get sure. away. You yeah. gotta have Phil on the team. Big Ben kids." If, if he's not on the team, then he's the captain. <laughs> yeah, that's true. He said, um, Frankie, you had this idea, and everyone's really had the idea, that like the the manufacturers should you know, have this team event where your team title is and your team Taylor made and your team Callaway, and, you, and that's where it happens. It's the Formula One model, but no more of these team names. Let's just do manufacturers. Yeah. Like, you already have these fans built in. Like I am a tailor made fan. I will root for them regardless of if they have a trade or whatever. It's a, it's built in fandom mm-hmm. and you have an event once a year, the big one. And it's called the makers. Ooh, it's called the makers. And it's a Ryder cup event. I felt my balls tingle. Dude. I said the same thing to him. I said the same fucking thing. It's called the makers. <laughs> And I grabbed him by, I almost grabbed him by the nipple, and I was like, dude, you got something there. The, the makers, makers is like the manufacturers. The name's incredible. <laughs> it's a win. The name is unbelievable. It's a dub. The name is a W. Wow. It's strong. Damn. <clears throat> Take it if you want it. I can't, you know, I can't do anything with that. I can't come up with a league where all the manufacturers get together and they come up with some sort of event. But you have to promise but to call I'm it the makers. I'm letting you know that you can steal the makers. 
The Makers is all time. Wow. <laughs> it is. Yeah. It's like the Masters, but it's the Makers. It's mm-hmm. great, man. It hit me like a ton of bricks. Wow. We're about to go have our own Makers this week. Um, Just in terms of golf. You know, we're about to play competitive golf. Oh, yeah, yeah. Film some videos. Yep, yep. All with one uh, manufacturer, though, luckily. Yeah, true. Taylor made. True. And we we'll got be... Trotty here, the Taylor made king. Our guy. Who says you can't earn rewards if you're staying in a vacation rental? With Verbo, when you book a vacation rental for your next golf outing and earn 2% cash back towards your next vacation through the One Key Rewards program, you're going to be very excited. So relax knowing, knowing, I didn't know how to say that word, relax knowing during your next golf trip, you can stay in a vacation rental and actually get rewarded for it. I actually booked one of these a month ago or so. With mm. this um, one key, I didn't really know what it was at, at first, but the one key rewards program signed up for it, booked a trip that I'm going to in the end of, Ju- end of July with all my buddies from home. There's 12 of us. We got this incredibly, incredibly nice vacation rental three minute drive from where we're going. Uh, and I was able to earn 2% cash back towards the next vacation through the one key system. It's an awesome deal. So, why deal with. Um, you know, all kinds of issues, stuck making small talk with your host, you know, all that stuff. Verbo, you don't have to deal with any of that. The problem is that I've been getting sucked into, like, just going to a resort or wanting to go to a destination and you just, like, look for the best resort or the resort that's there at the location you want to go to. I, I, I was looking at um, Lake George or Lake Placid mm. for these upcoming weeks because, um, you know, my sister-in-law, she is pregnant, and like we want to do like one more little getaway just to give them like a like go go away one more time before mm-hmm. your life changes. And I was looking at all these resorts, and then I went on Verbo, and like the options went out of control. It was like, That's oh my so god! Bad. Like now we can stay here. You can have a you can have a lake in the backyard. You can have this. You can have that. You can invite more people now. Like it, you're you're it's endless. Your options are endless as opposed to being like, Oh, the only resort that they had had this like one little room with two beds in it. And it's like thousand dollars a night. Like, would you guys even want to go? And everyone's like, no, Oh, go on Verbo. Look at these options. It's way better. It really opened my eyes. Like I'm done doing that stuff. I'm done looking for the resort. Like I'm going on Verbo. The key difference between Verbo and other uh, vacation rentals is the speed and ease in which you can get in touch with a human, allowing you to get uh, back to playing golf. That is very true from all my experiences with Verbo. It's so simple. It'll give you a code or whatever it might be. You know, a little message, done. You're just in. You don't have to worry about it. It's awesome. So book your next vacation, your next private vacation rental in the Verbo app. Go download that bad boy. Just scroll through. Scroll through at different destinations. Scroll through at places that maybe you're going to, that you're thinking about going to, whatever it might be. Get the Verbo app and book your next private vacation rental in the Verbo app. Uh, that's all I have. Anybody have anything else? Um, uh, I'm going to see if my clubs are broken. Speaking of Taylor made Delta lost my golf bag yesterday and I got it back today after a shit show. Didn't have my contacts at the Barso classic today. I had to sing the national anthem completely blind. Didn't see a golf shot the whole day, even though I did all the intros. Delta just said they were going to bring my bag to a fucking hotel and they didn't. And then I was like, is this worth it? I called them this morning. I said, is this worth I said, how many points do you think this mistake is worth? I, I asked the lady. She goes, I can only give you 2,500 uh, 2, points. And I said, you're going to have to make that 100,000 points. <laughs> I said, I can't see. I said, what's not seeing worth to you? <laughs> I said, she's like, you're going to have to file a complaint online. I, I can only give you 2,500. I'm like, all right, I'm sorry for giving you a hard time, but like, I just can't see a thing, and you guys <laughs> fucked that up for me. Um, um, I don't even know how I got into that. I don't think oh. I got anything else. Yeah, no, I think that's about it. Oh, my bag, I got it back today at the airport, and it's ripped to shreds, my <laughs> golf bag, my my travel case. Broken, shattered, ripped, definitely fell off a cart, and that's why it didn't make the flight yesterday. It didn't make the flight from New York to Florida. I think your clubs are okay. No, we're going to check. We're going to check everything. My guessing might be getting a frantic text message at like 7 a.m. his time tomorrow. Mm, he's he's Yeah, he's going to hate that. Yeah. Hey, dude, I need a thousand more clubs. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you, everybody, for listening. Um, we're going to be back on Thursday. We'll have a lot of stream song stuff to talk about, and then those videos will start rolling out. So thank you for listening. How was the audio on this, Alex? Pretty good? Uh, it depends on how fast we're going, but it uh, uh, the roads were kind of nasty. Yeah, you can just hear the driving, <clears throat> but that's, yeah. Yeah, all you right. could hear driving. I think it'll be all right. I think what time good. is it? 
11, 10. 10. Not bad. No. 11, 10. In bed playing footsies with myself at 11, 30? Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Woo! Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, we'll see you guys Thursday. Hit it hard. Hit it hard. Hit it hard.